The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents A Day to Remember, starring Robert Young and Ruth Huzzy. Robert Ryan is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. The month of September has been dedicated in a special way to the youth of America to arouse public interest in the principles to which family theater is dedicated. Namely, that the problems of youth are the problems of the home, and that the future of America depends on the homes of our nation. You know, juvenile delinquency is not a theoretic problem. It is real. It is the dark corner of juvenile life in the United States. And experts tell us that the great majority of criminal careers begin with juvenile delinquencies. Yes, every home needs a positive program of understanding and action. A home needs not only a family working together and thinking together, a home also needs family prayer. Yes, a family praying together is the most vital force in the welfare of a family. Without God, we can find no adequate solution to international or domestic problems. Without family prayer, there can be no security in a home. That's why we should make Youth Month mean a rededication of our children to God a rededication of our families to the daily practice of family prayer. There will be no problem of juvenile delinquency in your home if God is there, because family prayer renews in all members of a family the principles of faith and justice that give a home security, understanding, and happiness. Robert Ryan returns following tonight's Family Theater story, A Day to Remember, starring Ruth Huzzy and Robert Young. I'd like to send a telegram, please. Straight wire. To Mr. and Mrs. Charles Green, 427 Maple Avenue, Lake Town, Indiana. Uh, on this memorable occasion, I... No, 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 strike that out. Let's see. Uh, uh, try this. Dearest Mother and Dad, all of us here send our love and wish you happiness on this, your 43rd wedding anniversary. Sincerely and with deep affection, your son, Bob. Ordinarily, I have a rather poor memory for family dates like birthdays and anniversaries. The only one that really sticks in my mind is mother and dad's wedding anniversary. I can honestly say that's one family occasion I've never forgotten. I probably never will. It was stamped in my mind with indelible ink when I was just a boy. My sister Connie was nine at the time, and we were living back there in the old family place in Lake Town, one of those old-fashioned gray two-story houses with the big elm trees in front. I remember that Mother explained one morning that this particular day was kind of a special occasion. I couldn't quite figure it out. Is today a holiday, Mother? No, not like a holiday as you think of it, dear. It's a day your father and I like to remember. What for? Well, well, you mustn't mention it to your father, but we were married 12 years ago today. It's called a wedding anniversary. Oh, like a birthday. That's a getting born anniversary. Yes, it's something like that. But remember, Robert, we won't mention it to father. At the time, I couldn't understand why I wasn't supposed to tell Dad about it. Of course, I've learned a little about women since then and how they like to have husbands remember anniversaries without any coaching. 
Anyway, I promised to keep the secret and started figuring out how to earn some money to buy Mother a gift, since this anniversary seemed to call for a present of some kind. Well, I made a deal with my father to pull weeds out of the front lawn and return for some pocket money, and when he left for the office, I got a paring knife out of the kitchen and went to work on the dandelions. I'd just gotten started when Connie came along. What are you doing? Digging weeds. Daddy tell you to? Nope. What you doing it for? Oh, go chase yourself. Did Mother say you had to? Look, I'm making some money. Didn't anybody say I had to do it? What are you going to buy? Wouldn't you like to know? I'll help you if you tell me. All right, but it's a secret. Today is Mother's wedding anniversary. She and Daddy got married 12 years ago. Is that a secret? She said not to tell Daddy. You better not blab or I'll fix you plenty. I won't tell. I'm going to get a penny for every ten weeds I pull up. And I'm going to buy Mother a present. Gee, we could make a lot of money. There's a billion weeds. Let's both do it and then we can get her both something. Oh, go chase yourself. Please, Robert. I can dig up weeds like the Deccans. Oh, always button in. All right. You go dig on that side of the lawn. This is my side. And you got to dig your share, too. No looking for four-leaf clovers. <laughs> I got twice that many. How many have you got? I don't know. I didn't count them. Where are you putting yours? In the box. I'll put mine in there, too. Hey, look what you did. I had mine all counted. Now you got them all mixed up. I ought to fix you. You better not. Here comes Daddy, and if you hit me, I'll tell. Mm, now I don't know how many I've got. Robert, you and Constance get cleaned up for lunch. It's five minutes after 12. What, uh, what do you have in that box? Weeds. Remember, you said this morning that... Oh, yes. Yeah, well, you've uh, done pretty well. Yeah, here's ten cents. But uh, I think I'll need more than that. Oh, ten cents is a good sum of money. Tenth part of a dollar. If you save a hundred ten cents, you'll have ten dollars. Well, I know, but see, I wanted to... You wanted to what? Well, I don't have time to save it up. It's got to be today. What are you up to, Robert? Nothing, sir, Nothing. Why is it so important that you have money today? Well, I, I can't tell you. You see, it, it's something I just can't... Robert, there's nothing you can't tell your father. We'll have no secrets. Tell me what you're going to do with this money. I was going to buy Mother a present. Well, that's a nice... What uh, kind of a present? Anniversary. Anniversary? Oh, by George. Wedding anniversary. I wasn't to tell you. Now, Robert, my boy, we'll keep the secret. Uh, if you're going to buy your mother something, you'll need more than a dime. <laughs> Here's a quarter. There's another piece of pie, if you'd care for it, Charles. Well, just a half piece, thank you, Polly. You children finished your lunch? Yes, yes sir. And you may be excused. Can we play in the car? And hump the horn? Robert, you know what Father says about playing in the car. You may sit in the car if you promise not to touch anything. And honk the horn? Hmm. You may each honk the horn once. Boy, come on, Connie. Me first, me first. <laughs> Some hot coffee, Charles? No, thank you. I've been wondering, Polly, if you remember what day this is. Yes, Charles. Twelve years we've been married. That's quite a long time. They've been happy years, haven't they? Yes. I feel we've done rather well. It makes me very happy that you remembered, Charles. Why, of course I remembered. In fact, I've been thinking, Polly, is there anything you'd especially like? I want to buy something for you, this being our anniversary. Oh, no, no, Charles. You mustn't spend money on a present for me. Well, let's not speak in terms of money, my dear. That reminds me, Charles. Mrs. Bartlett down the street stopped in yesterday, and do you know what she told me? Hmm. She said Mr. Bartlett opened a bank account for her. A bank account? For heaven's sake, what for? Is he sick? Oh, no, no. He, he felt she should have her own money to buy things and pay the bills. Well, Polly, I hope you don't approve of such an idea. A wife and mother is no business being involved in the sordid exchange of money. Dealing with collectors and tradesmen is not the duty of a self-respecting woman. Now, the hand that rocks the cradle should... The hand that rocks the cradle shouldn't be... <clears throat> Excuse me... Money at uh, that horn. 
Good evening, Polly. Hello, Charles. Dinner will be ready in five minutes. Polly, I have something for you. For me? And before I give it to you, I want you to understand that I'm doing this against my better judgment. What is it, Charles? I stopped at the bank this afternoon and opened a checking account for you. A checking account? Mm-hmm. You, you mean a bank account? Well, they're the same thing. Oh. It's your anniversary present, Polly. Charles, you're a darling. Oh, imagine Polly Green with a bank account. <laughs> what will I do with it? Well, buy whatever you need for the house, pay the bills. But, Charles, th this is all so new to me. How can I buy something when the money is in the bank? Well, you write a check, Polly. You see, here is your bank book showing the deposits, and here is the checkbook. Oh, oh, it's pretty, isn't it? Oh, green paper. <laughs> what do I do? Well, it's very simple. When you go to buy something, you write the date up here, the amount of money here, mm -hmm. the name of the store here, and mm. then you sign your name down here. Mm. Then what do I do? Well, you give the clerk the check. And no money? <laughs> Polly, the check takes the place of money. That's the reason for a bank account. Oh, it's wonderful. Perfectly wonderful. Mm -hmm. But, Charles... Yes? Are you sure it's legal? <laughs> Even after Dad explained the principle of a checking account, Mother was not convinced that a piece of paper with her name on it could take the place of money. The next morning, she slipped the checkbook in her purse and hurried down to Clinton's department store. Morning, Mrs. Green. Something for you this morning? Yes, I, uh, well, let's see. I'd, I'd like a spool of darning cotton. Mm, darning cotton. And, um, oh, a pair of those knitting needles. Knitting needles. Let me see now. Um, I think I'll have a card of those little pearl buttons. All righty. How much is that? That'll be, uh, 20 cents. Would it be all right if I paid you with a check? A check for 20 cents? Oh, it's a good check. I guess it'll be all right, Mrs. Green. I'll write it out. Let's see the date. Uh, Clinton's Department Store, 20 cents. Now, you see, I sign it here at the bottom. Here. Yes, I see. <laughs> there you are. Now, to get your money, you take the check to the bank, and they'll pay you. Yes, Mrs. Green. Well, thank you. Well, wait, don't forget your package. Oh, oh thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> It worked. That piece of paper with Mother's name on it was just as good as money. Though Mother didn't fully understand why. As she walked home, she opened the paper bag several times to make sure it had really happened. Yes, the darning cotton and the knitting needles and cart of pearl buttons were there. There was no doubt about it. She had just turned onto Maple Avenue when she saw the crowd gathered in front of the Evans house. Something must have happened. Was someone in the family ill? She found her neighbor, Mrs. Corey, at the edge of the crowd. Hattie, Hattie, what's going on? Hello, Polly. Haven't you heard? The Evans are selling their house. They're having an auction. Oh, really? Don't repeat it, Polly. But I heard that Mr. Evans is bankrupt, lost everything he had. What a dreadful thing to happen. I was told they're selling the house to pay his debts. Poor Mrs. Evans. With those three children. What will they do? Heaven only knows. All right, folks, all right, all right. We've seen the house, and now we're ready to start the bidding. Who'll start the ball moving now? Who'll say a thousand dollars? Where will they go? No money, not a roof over their heads. It's a tragedy. It surely is. I'll be five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars for the silver. Five hundred to a hill. Seven fifty to a hill. Seven fifty. I'll be seven fifty. Seven hundred fifty dollars. Who'll weigh a thousand? Who'll say a thousand to a hill? A thousand to a hill? A thousand? I'll bid one thousand. One thousand dollars a bid. One thousand. Those dear little children, homeless. Polly, what are you going to do? I'm going to buy the house myself. Oh, auctioneer. Uh, uh, I bid $1,100. The lady says $1,100. Who'll say $1,200? $1,200 is bid. You can't sell it to that man. I bid $1,300. $1,300 from the lady here. $1,400. $1,400 is bid. He can't have it. I bid $1,500. $1,500. The lady says $1,500. $1,500. $1,500. What do you say, mister? Do you want to say $16? You want to say $16? $1,500 is bid. Do I hear $16? Do I hear $16? Are you all done? Fifteen hundred once, fifteen hundred twice. Sold to the lady for fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, you're a 
pretty reckless bitter lady. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. But you see, those people are friends of mine. They have three little children, and they need their home. Then why did you buy it? Oh, I'll give it back to them. Uh, will the lady who bought the house please bring up the money? Oh, dear. Uh, may I borrow your pen? I suppose so. What are you going to do? I'm going to give the man a check. Signed, Mrs. Polly Green. <laughs> Will that be all right? That's perfectly satisfactory, Mrs. Green. I think you'll find the papers all in order. Here's your receipt, and I hope you'll be very happy in your new home. Oh, no, we don't intend to live here. We already have a home of our own. Polly, dear, I think it's simply wonderful what you've done for the poor Evans family. If it hadn't been for you, oh, I just couldn't stand seeing those children without a roof over their heads. And besides, Mrs. Evans has been so sweet to me all these years. What a generous soul you are, Polly. But all that money... My dear, I didn't dream. Well, Hattie, I haven't told a soul, but we just celebrated our 12th wedding anniversary, and you know what Charles gave me for a present? I couldn't imagine. What? My very own checking account in the bank. No! Well, my goodness sakes alive. Now, Hattie, don't you mention it to a soul. Why, Polly, you know me. I wouldn't think... Oh, here comes Mrs. Evans now. Oh, Mrs. Green, Mrs. Green, Polly! Oh, hello, Sarah. Oh, Polly, I'm so glad you got the house. I, I hope you didn't pay too much for it. Now, Sarah, I understand all about everything. It's going to be all right. You and John and the children will go on just as you were. Uh, what do you mean, Polly? We'll talk about it later, dear. Don't you worry for a moment. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Uh, Charles? Yes, Polly? What are you doing? Uh, reading the paper. What is it? Well, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. All right. The Evans down the street were in very serious trouble. Trouble? That's news to me. I heard they sold their house today for a big price. You don't call that serious trouble. Well, there was something else. Well, I've heard of nothing. I understand some woman bought it. Charles, I've been wondering, how can the bank... I mean, when people write checks, how can they simply pay out money? Well, they don't. <laughs> you have to have money deposited in the bank. We put it there and then uh, draw it out as we need it. Oh. That's what your bank book is for. It shows how much is deposited to your account. That's how much you can draw out. How much is there in my account? Look at your bank book, Polly. I deposited $100. $100? Well, I feel you're entitled to it. Charles... What would happen if, well, if somebody should write a check for more than they had in the bank? Well, that's a serious thing. If the person can make up the difference to the bank, it's usually forgotten. <clears throat> if he can't, uh, he goes to jail. Jail? What's wrong, Polly? Oh, oh, nothing. I just wondered. <laughs> May I help you, madam? I wonder if I might speak to the owner of the bank. Well, I'm the manager. Is there anything I can do? You're the manager. Yes, ma'am. I, um, I'm Mrs. Green, and I think I've done something dreadful. Well, what have you done? I didn't do it on purpose. Really, I didn't. Well, perhaps if you'll tell me what it is that you've done. <laughs> I wrote a check for $1,500. Oh? And I only have $100 in the bank. Oh, uh, perhaps you'd better sit down. Please don't send me to jail. I had to do it. A very nice family was being put out in the street with no home. And if I hadn't bought the house, they'd have had no place to go. Well, Mrs. Green, I appreciate your generosity, but you use the bank's money. That's a criminal offense. But I'm not a criminal. I give you my word. I know, Mrs. Green, I know. It was a mistake. Now, the thing for you to do is to go to the people who sold you the house and tell them it was a mistake. Oh, I can't do that. Well, then perhaps Mr. Green will pay the $1,400. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't dare ask him to do that. <sighs> uh, Mrs. Green, you're making this matter very difficult. I'm terribly sorry. Isn't there any other way I could pay you back the money? A little each week. What? I, I could give you a dollar out of my house money every Friday. I'm afraid that that would take quite a long time. Now, please don't think I'm being obstinate, Mrs. Green, but you will either have to ask the owners of the house to return your check or cover the amount with the bank. It's either that yes, or... Yes, I know. Well, I'll do something. I promise I will. Mother, Daddy's home. 
Robert, you and Connie run outside and play. Why, Mother? Why do we have to go outside? Well, dinner isn't ready. Uh, don't ask questions. Just run along. Polly? Yes, Charles? Polly Green, I wish to speak to you. Yes? I'm not angry, Polly. I, I'm upset. Terribly upset. I met John Evans downtown. He told me you bought their house and gave them a check for $1,500. Is that true? Yes, Charles. Yes, I was going to tell you. I didn't understand about the bank and the money. Didn't understand? Did, 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 did you think the bank was going to give you that money? Well, I was wondering about that. Oh, it seemed dear. awfully kind of them. But don't you see, Charles, I couldn't let a perfect stranger buy the Evans house. They were in trouble. They ha they'd have no place to live. Trouble? I've heard nothing about it. Oh, it's very sad, Charles. Mr. Evans has lost everything. Well, they say that's why he had to sell the house, to pay his debts. Well, I'll be switched. Well, I couldn't think of those little children with no roof over their heads. Well, I can understand why you did it, Polly, but, but we haven't enough money to do such a thing. It's impossible. You'll have to go to Mrs. Evans and tell her that... Well, just tell her, that's all. Uh, oh, it'll be such a disappointment. I know. Isn't there something we can sell? Now, listen, Polly. Charity is all right, but this is out of reason. We can't raise $1,400. It can't be done. Mm. There's someone at the door. I'll go. Good evening, Mrs. Green. Oh, Mr. Evans. Well, how nice to see you. Won't you come in? Thank you. Well, hello, Evans. Hello, Green. I just stopped in to tell you folks how pleased we are you got the house. Sort of keeping it in the family, as it were. Yes, it's, uh... I was going to... Sorry to hear things are not going well, Evans. Eh? Huh? I wouldn't say that. Couldn't be better, to be perfectly honest. No trouble? Well, I should say not. Business has never been better down at the store. The reason we sold the old house, we're building a new place. Quite a bit larger. Hope you folks will come over and see us. <coughs> That's wrong. Did I, I say something I shouldn't have? Evans, uh... About that check Mrs. Green gave you, I... Oh, so that's it. Well, you don't have to worry. The bank cashed it. Didn't even look up the account. Your credit is certainly ace high. Guess they think quite a lot of you there at the bank, Green. Oh, dear. Well, Mrs. Evans will bring over the keys. Thank you. Uh, stop in at the store, Green. We'll get together for lunch. Goodbye, Mrs. Green. Goodbye, Mr. Evans. Well, do you know what this means, Polly? What does it mean? We are penniless. Oh. We are paupers. Dear. By selling the car and my office furniture, I can just about raise enough to pay my overdraft at the How bank. How could I do such an awful thing? I don't know, Polly. That bank account was the most expensive anniversary present you will ever have. Believe me, I'm not saying I told you so, Polly, but there is a very costly illustration of what I said about women handling money. I guess you're right, Charles. Now, if that's Evans back again, we're not answering the door. Well, we can't ignore him. I can. Good evening, madam. I'm Mr. Biglow. Oh, yes. You're the gentleman from the auction. Who is it, Polly? This is Mr. Biglow. He was at the auction. Uh, what is it you want? If you don't mind, I'd like my fountain pen back. What's he talking about, Polly? Oh, your fountain pen. Oh, of course. Oh, how foolish of me. I borrowed Mr. Biglow's pen to write the check and forgot to return it. I hope you'll forgive me. That's all right. Mr. Biglow was the other bidder. He wanted to buy the Evans house, too. Oh, he did? Mm. Well, <laughs> possibly Mr. Biglow would still be interested in buying the place. Oh, Charles, we just bought it. We couldn't sell it. Not so soon. But who said I wanted to buy it? Well, who said we wanted to sell it? Listen, Polly. It's a very can... nice house, Charles. I think we should keep it. Well, if you think I'm going to pay you a profit, you're all wrong. It's an adorable house. Why... Well, I'll give you $50 more than you paid for it and not one cent more. Sold. <laughs> Charles. Yes, Polly? I've been thinking. You were right. A woman shouldn't handle money. Well, thank heaven you've learned your lesson. I guess it's... Well, it just isn't a woman's nature to be shrewd. Of course it isn't. Here's the checkbook, Charles. I'm giving it back to you. Well, I'm sorry you had to go through such a trying experience, Polly. But I've often said experience is the best teacher. Mm hmm What's this? Bank balance, $99.80. Oh, I, I wrote a 20-cent check at the dry goods store. Well, that's not what I meant. What about the $50 we made from Mr. Biglow? Oh. Well, I thought you'd like me to keep that. 
sort of a present on our 12th anniversary. Somehow, since then, Mother's and Dad's wedding anniversary was always a date I remembered. Yes, and after that, Mother never made any show of understanding money matters. But Mother understood so many things. So many things that made a good marriage and a happy home. This is Robert Ryan again. You know, the closing words of tonight's play hit a responsive chord, I guess, for a lot of us. Maybe sometimes Mother doesn't quite understand the details of money matters. Although usually she does a great job of balancing a budget against a high cost of living. But when Mother does understand what goes into making a true and lasting marriage, there is certain to be happiness in a home. Yes, most mothers have a wonderful gift for living, a gift for loving, and a gift of spiritual insight. The great gift of talking to God. That's what prayer is. And most mothers know the power of prayer. Prayer is the language of love, the way we talk to God. And more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. So let's thank God for what we have in our homes, and let's ask his help in difficulties. He'll never let us down. And pray together with your family. Pray tonight and every night. For a family tie should never die. And the family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Robert Young and Ruth Hussey for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Paul West for writing tonight's play and to Max Terror for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Tommy Bernard, Gene Layton, Ann Tobin, Wally Mayer, Joe Granby, and Charles Maxwell. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Stephen Dunn and Gail Storm in Brannigan's Bat. Your hostess will be Claudette Colbert. This is Robert Ryan saying good night, and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater stars will be Gail Storm and Stephen Dunn with Claudette Colbert as hostess. Meryl Ross speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.